You know, with February coming to an end, I figured it's best to talk about a very important culture in America. And I'm talking about Black History Month. I know it sounds pretty cheesy coming from a white guy who's lived in the suburbs all of his life. That doesn't mean I understand racism, which I do, along with the hardships and struggles that they have to endure over the years to get to where they are. I'm not saying it's entirely perfect, but it's a huge step up from where we were like 100 or 200 years ago. Which is why they dedicate an entire month, which just seems fair, and of course to make some kick-ass movies like Black Panther. Because... segue, yay! Black Panther is Marvel Comics' very first African superhero created by Stan Lee, surprisingly enough, and over the years he has become many things from a king to an Avenger, banging Storm on the side and marrying her, and a few other things. But now with his movie being a box office hit, and the other comic book film Deadpool 2 coming out right around the corner, I might as well talk about the fan film team up. Why? Because I really need some relevant keywords to add in the title to throw in here for new watchers out there to subscribe to my channel. The Road to 1K! Hey, I gotta start playing the YouTube game like everyone else, so... Fan film time. Anywho, the Deadpool and Black Panther fan film, back in red and black, was created by a YouTube channel called Halo Union, in which they must save a group of ransom missionaries from M'Baku and his band of mercenaries. Oh boy, this is gonna be one of those Marvel fan films just like the Spider-Man fan flicks I did a while back. Check it out. Well, let's not delay the inevitable. This is back in red and black. For real? So this video begins with a group of mercenaries holding a bunch of sweaty white people hostage. After intimidating the scared crowd, their leader receives a phone call. Hello? Yes? Who is this? I will find you. And I will kill you. It turns out to be Deadpool, who tries to deliver pizza to the mercenaries after giving off some ASMR lip smacking. And, for no apparent reason, their leader shoots his cameraman in the head. Great job, man! Not only did you kill the one guy in your group who was able to handle the camera, but you also damaged it in the process, as you tried to make demands. Well, I guess it doesn't matter as they get another camera and demand 20 million dollars after killing a dude. An American by the name of Mr. Nigel makes a few phone calls spilling exposition while taking hits from his vape and shots from his purified water. With no luck from anyone, Deadpool calls him up and says that he will save his daughter and the rest of the hostages for 50 million dollars and a month's worth of chimichangas. Mr. Nigel agrees, and you can tell by the serious acting on his face. I would want more than just her rescued. I want their leader! And you're gonna destroy their entire empire. We then cut to a group of mercenaries hanging out at their local creek and having a bonfire in the middle of the day like a bunch of teenagers until Deadpool shows up to have a little fun and starts killing off the thugs and kicks one of them into the bonfire. <laughs> God damn, that looked pretty terrifying because I'm pretty certain that fire was real and not CG. Black Panther joins in to stop Deadpool from killing the last thug. They have a brief scuffle and the Ragoon runs away only for these two to stop because Black Panther placed a tracking device on him which will lead them back to the mercenaries hideout. As the two agree to team up after an awkward high five, we come back to the mercenaries' suburban basement where the sweaty hostages begin to bicker amongst one another and chew up a good five minutes of pointless padding until one girl tries to calm them down as it reveals a loosely strand of a connection that her father, you know, the vape smoking guy from earlier, will help them and asks everyone to join hands in prayer. And coming from myself, who's a little agnostic at times, I feel like this scene is pretty much really ham-fisted if you ask me. Also, I know the sweat in their f on their faces is supposed to simulate them being in a hot, humid area, but god damn, why do they put so much on this girl? I mean, it kind of looks like she got hosed with a spray bottle. But no matter, as DP and BP find the hideout and pull off the old Wookiee trick as they infiltrate their headquarters. Everything seems to be going hunky-dory until... What the fuck? That's him! That's him! Yeah, so their cover is blown and after the mercenaries leader shoots Deadpool in the head and is about to do the same to Black Panther, Deadpool bounces right back up and they both fight back and split up looking to save the hostages 
shoot some jabronis, and choreograph a few fight scenes with the stunt doubles. Oh, Jesus! That looked like it hurt! And as Deadpool continues to distract the goons, Black Panther finds the hostages and they all make their way to the exit while picking up the mercenaries' toy guns. And somehow knowing how to use the guns after being pissed scared five minutes earlier. As they make their way outside, their contact, who we were never informed about, rolls on in and escorts the hostages out of the mercenaries' hideout. And then there's this angry Terry Crews looking guy who attacks Panther, which is honestly not a bad fight scene. But Panther defeats M'Baku and Deadpool tosses him in the trunk and drives away. Which ends pretty abruptly, if you ask me. Oh boy, this is a bit of a difficult one. Normally when I rate these fan films, I tend to be a little lenient at times. Because honestly, they're just pretty much working with a very small budget that they have to work with at times, and I can relate. However, when it comes to filming, that's only half the work. The other half, of course, being that there's also post-production and editing as well. And from my personal point of view, I do believe that the editing in here felt extremely rushed at times. Kind of like as if it was on a time frame, if you ask me. The audio dubbing from Deadpool and Black Panther felt as if it didn't sync up with the other actors more than half the time. There were no bullet hole effects from the characters after they were shot up. And the music that they used in here tends to end pretty awkwardly. There's also a lot of unnecessary padding as it just feels like they were chewing up the scenes just to surpass the 30 minute mark. They were also never quite clear on what was going on in the beginning of this video, like how did the hostages get captured to begin with? Oh, they were doing missionary work outside of Wakanda. Thanks for telling me that, like 20 minutes later. I will say, however, that they do have some pretty nice cinematography at times, and the fight choreography was okay. And apparently this video was a build-up to a sequel that they worked on, which I will get into somewhere, whenever, in the near future, I honestly don't know. But for now, I'm gonna have to give this fan film a one and a half out of five, because that's just mostly for effort, and it wasn't very entertaining on my part. And if you watchers out there would like to see this video in its entirety, you can look at the link in the description box below, which I will provide, and, or if you have any comments about this video that I've reviewed, feel free to let me know in the comment board below. And until next time, I'm gonna focus my next review on another fan flick, but mostly from a pair of much bigger YouTubers. So, see you then. I see that we're getting a bit bolder these days. I mean, it's not every day that you see a masked guy walking around on a pier. It does not matter. Soon everything will come to light. Yeah, about that. How are you doing with that little personal journey, by the way? Have you actually found this so-called rift? As a matter of fact, I have. But the rift requires three keys for it to open. As you can tell, I only have two of them. And the third one is not exactly easy to obtain. Oh, come on, really? I mean, it can't be that bad. I mean, who the hell has the ring anyways? Someone far more powerful than I am. But I really gotta ask, how much longer is this gonna be? Not too long. For you see, I've already sent out the message. And he is coming.